Yes, yes, people, hope you're all doing well. Now, if you are familiar with this channel, you might remember that a lot of my content last year was centered around traveling. And I think it's fair to say that I was lucky enough to get away on a decent few European holidays last year. So today I thought I would reflect back on what is probably the best year of my life, to be honest, and rank everywhere I traveled in 2022. Let's just skip the long-winded intro and get straight into it. Number seven, Milan, Italy. I will start by saying that I didn't actually have a bad trip at all last year, but if I had to pick one that was the least good, it would most definitely be Milan. Obviously we're talking Italy so as you would expect it was a gorgeous city but I don't know if this was just us we kind of felt like there was not that much to do there. Maybe we were just being bad tourists but we went for three days and I wouldn't really recommend going for any longer than that. We wandered around the city, we went to the Duomo, an adjacent museum, we went to the castle, Da Vinci's vineyard, the Galleria and it was all really cool but it just felt like we got through it a lot faster than we thought we would. Like I say the architecture of the city itself was beautiful and going into the Duomo and actually going up onto the roof of it was definitely a trip highlight. I could definitely see the appeal of Milan if you wanted to go on a shopping holiday. They do have a lot of both high-end and high street clothing shops there. But personally, this was the last trip we took last year and by the time it came around, I was pretty broke. Although I will say the weather in the city was great for a November. Also, to be honest, I was kind of disappointed by the food. Like, I don't know if this is just the places that we went were the wrong picks, but you think Italy, you think it's going to be amazing and it kind of wasn't. Also, the interactions we had with a lot of the wait staff out there just seemed generally negative. Everyone seemed a little bit rude and like I say we were only there for three days so i don't really want to cast aspersions based on that but that's just the experience we had overall not a bad city but definitely one that i would say is overrated and overhyped number six amsterdam Netherlands. People might be surprised to find Amsterdam so low down on this list and to be honest it's purely because we were only there for a day so I can't really judge it the same as somewhere that we went to for a couple of days or a week. Because let's be real Amsterdam's amazing. It's one of those places that you go to and you instantly feel the vibe in the air. It's such a gorgeous city, the architecture, the canals, it's all amazing. It probably sounds stereotypical to say at this point but there was just such a relaxed atmosphere there. We went on a canal boat trip, we rented bikes, we even went to the famous sex museum. Although I will say that did seem like one of the more overrated tourist attractions in the city. Although I don't really feel that I can accurately judge it because I was kind of rushed around the place by my friend Josh, seen here riding a massive dong. He seemed somewhat uncomfortable about the whole experience and fair play, there are a lot of graphic images. It's definitely not a family attraction. All in all, it seemed like a pretty great city. I would definitely love to spend more time there, get to sample more of what the city has to offer. Not that. The food was great. The people seemed chill. Good vibes. Number five, Barcelona, Spain. I had heard a lot of good things about Barcelona before we went from various different friends of mine. In fact, my friend Sean gave me the hot tourist tip of, hey lad, you should defo go to that Sagrada Familia. We did indeed check out that Sagrada Familia. And fair play, it is awe-inspiring. Obviously, it's an architectural marvel, and we even got to hear the organ played while we were in there, which was so sick. As is often the case with these city breaks, walking was our main mode of transport, and we found it very samey-samey, obviously with the city being built on such a grid. But there are a lot of cool things to do. Personally, I really enjoyed visiting Park Güell. The Mercado de la Bocaria was also a highlight. We also visited a really cool science and natural history museum, the name of which... I can't remember right now. And looking at the city from the nearby hilltops at night time is something that I'll never forget. Was a pretty sick trip to be fair. I will say maybe slightly overhyped by my friends before I went, but the city's decent. The food was great. The weather was great. Definitely worth checking out. Number four. Los Cristianos, Tenerife. This one's so high on the list, partly for selfish reasons. I'm from the UK, so I holidayed to the Canary Islands quite a lot as a child. Never been to Tenerife though, actually this was the first time. This was also the first holiday we went on post all that that happened. I hadn't left the country for like two and a half years. So what we really wanted to do was just go away somewhere, chill, somewhere quite cheap, where the weather's nice, have a little beach holiday, have a little poolside holiday. And that is exactly what we did. If I went again, I'd maybe like rent a car and explore the island a bit more, but that just wasn't the vibe of this holiday. One of the only activities that we actually did do was go to Siam Park, which is a really sick water park. Would 100% recommend if you're in Tenerife, such a good day. Aside from that, we didn't really do too much. Los Cristianas is a chill town, nice beaches, nice restaurants, and our accommodation was pretty decent too. This was also the first holiday that I went on with my girlfriend, Abby, seen here being Abby. Um, so for that reason, it will always have a special place in my heart. Number three, Budapest, Hungary. What do I even say about Budapest? Like it was just such a good time. There's so much to do in Budapest. And what I found is because it's not a massive city, you can walk pretty easily from place to place. And even if you didn't want to walk, like the city isn't so dense with the traffic that you couldn't just get a taxi or a bolt, which is the Uber equivalent over there. This was such a foodie holiday and what a place for it. The food was impeccable and so cheap. The whole experience was quite cheap actually, to be honest. It didn't really set us back much at all. Definitely one of my favorite places we visited. So much 
much to do. Weather was great. The city's gorgeous. The vibe's great. I would 100% recommend checking it out. Number two, Malini slash Dubrovnik. Croatia. This is without a doubt the best beach holiday I've ever been on. We stayed in Malini, which is just up the coast from Dubrovnik. We did actually visit Dubrovnik for a day, but we had to leave early because of thunderstorms. The weather wasn't too great for the first couple of days that we were there, but once it brightened up, it was absolutely gorgeous. When I tell you that this is some of the best coastline I have ever seen with the bluest, most crystal clear waters, it wasn't even that cold in the water. It was just lovely and refreshing. It was perfect. The natural landscapes near where we were staying are absolutely beautiful. We also got the boat to Lockram Island, which was gorgeous. There was a cool lagoon there. Again, natural landscapes, great. Full of peacocks for some reason. If you go back and watch my Croatia vlog, you will realize that I barely even filmed anything because I was just like so relaxed the whole time. And that's what that trip did to me. Like the hotel we were staying in was cool. The pool was great and that, but we were right on the seafront. So we spent a lot of time in that ocean. The view from our hotel room was also absolutely impeccable. As you can see, it's so gorgeous. Like I say, that natural landscape coming through. The sea was brilliant. The food was maybe the only negative. There weren't that many restaurants in the area that we were staying in and it tended to be either pizza or pasta. That was it. Definitely wasn't good for my fitness journey although there was a gym in the hotel which was half decent but yeah it's a shame there wasn't just a bit more variety in the food i 100 percent would go back there i actually want to go to different parts of croatia now that i know what it's about and now that i've seen it it was just it was just a great time paradise is the only word i can use it was just a gorgeous paradise and here we are the top spot possibly my favorite place i've ever been to number one berlin Germany. When I spoke about cities having vibes, like Amsterdam had a great vibe, Budapest had a great vibe, Berlin was like another level. It was also great getting to go around the city with our friend Jamie, who was actually living in Hanover at the time. He's fluent German, he'd been to the city before, he knew the history of the city a lot as well, he could show us the best places, he could tell us the stories. It just really enhanced the experience for me. We definitely went down the more historical route with the sort of touristy things that we did, but I feel like Berlin's the kind of city that you could go to and you could do a different kind of holiday every time you went there. There's history, there's art, obviously there's a great nightlife scene out there. A lot of the buildings, particularly in the west, were just gorgeous to look at. Getting to learn about Berlin and the city and see some of the places where these major historical events took place was just such a poignant experience. The city itself is obviously huge and sprawling. Jamie actually said to me before we went out there, like, lad, it's massive. It used to be two countries and you can definitely tell. Obviously to be out there with Jamie and Sean as well, to spend Spend that time with my two best friends was just one of the most incredible experiences I've ever had. Finding good food seems to be a bit of a nightmare, but I, it's not even something I think about when I think of Berlin anymore because the, the general experience was just so positive. I can't wait to go back. I can't wait to experience different elements of the city. I can't wait to feel that vibe again, man. 10 out of 10 city, great architecture, great culture, just a hive of culture. I would 100% recommend checking it out. If you're going to go anywhere off this list, it's got to be number one. It's got to be Berlin. So there you go, people. That is everywhere that I traveled in 2022. I hope you enjoyed the video. I will put a link in the description to a playlist full of all the travel vlogs that I did last year so you can take a more in-depth look at all the different places that I've discussed in this video. And yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.